OK, this is a quick demonstration looking at some uh, pressure volume loops taken from a Miller MPVS um, system in a mouse. Um, the data you can see on the screen is pressure at the top. We've got volume here, which isn't actually volume, it's relative volume units. You can see here in the RVU window, relative volume units. We've got some temperature and heart rate. And there's a few other channels hidden away in the background that we don't need to worry about. Uh, and we're going to use uh, lab chart 7 with the PV loop plugin to actually do the analysis of the uh, PV loops. It's important to say that this is data we've already recorded. It's not new data. Um, you can use the PV loop um, workflow to actually do all the recording as well as all the calibrations. And it's also worth noting that on the side of the screen here, we've also got a, a copy of Excel open where we've already calculated the mean slope and intercept for the relative volume unit um, calibrations where three have been done and an average has been taken and we're using those data shortly to calibrate so I'll move them out of the way. So we're going to start off by going to the PV loop menu and clicking on the workflow button. This brings up this new window down the side and this window will follow through our workflow as we do the experiment. We're going to use um, a mouse workflow so we click on here and choose small mammal. Um, we then need to select what the pressure and the volume channel is, and in this case, the pressure channel is channel 1, and the volume channel is channel 3. So you choose channel 1, pressure, channel 3 is volume. So now we've selected that, and as we've done that, you can see that a whole load of more drop-down menus have appeared here that allow us to calibrate the pressure, the conductance, do some recording, and then at the end of the experiment, we can do cuvette, saline, alpha, and various analyses. So let's just start with the pressure calibration. Um, our data here is already calibrated according to pressure. You can see here on the pressure trace we've got millimetres of mercury. It could be at the beginning of your recording you've just got voltage here. So we're going to cheat in this example and just go down to the unit conversion and we're going to borrow the numbers that are on the screen here that have already been converted from volts to millimetres of mercury and we're going to feed them into the screen over here. So you can see from the data, 0 volts is 0 millimetres of mercury and roughly 1 volt is 100 millimetres of mercury pressure. So I'm just going to feed those numbers as 0 and 1 because frankly there's no difference between 0.99 and 1 volt. So go over the box, 0 volts is 0, 1 volt is 100. And these are not the numbers that the MPVS unit sends you as a default um, calibration, but these should be numbers that you calibrate your catheter um, using a sphygma manometer, mercury manometer to actually calibrate. Don't rely on what the computer sends out because that's going to be a default value of 0 and 1. Uh, you may find that over time your transducer loses calibration and these numbers aren't the same. So now we can apply the calibration and as we click apply it's recalibrated this top channel here in red but you can see there's no change in the numbers because they were already calibrated to these numbers. We now move down to conductance calibration, click on the drop down list and this gives us a similar window. It gives us the opportunity to start sampling and actually do the calibration in the live window here on the right but since we've already done this recording before we're not going to need to do that. You need to enter your standard calibration values with known conductance. We're working in relative volume units not uh, millisieverts so we go to relative volume units and in fact our relative volume unit calibration is already done again for us in our window here you can see the scale is RVU it's not voltage but of course if you load up your MPVS or your power lab system for the first time all these numbers will just be voltages so we can click down and look at the unit conversion and again we can transpose these numbers into our window so it's minus 8 volts is 5 and plus 9.7 volts is 50 so we'll write that down in the window so minus 8 is 5 and plus 9.7 is 50 so minus 8 volts is 5 RVUs and 9.7 volts is 50 RVUs but again you could do this yourself by actually recording uh, the data and redoing the calibration so we're going to apply that conductance calibration now to the data and again the data here don't change because this data are already calibrated now the next option gives you the opportunity to sample and in this experiment we've already done the sampling but this would 
invite you to start your experiment. So your catheter can now go inside your uh, mouse and you can press start and it'll start recording the data on the screen showing you calibrated pressure and calibrated RVUs. But since we've already done our recording we'll click on sampling complete just so we see a row of nice green ticks which makes sure we've done the right thing in the right order. Um, the next with the um, conductance system is the cuvette calibration. Again most often you will have done your cuvette calibration before you do your experiment but again this software invites you to do your cuvette calibration at the end of your experiment often if you've got a terminal procedure you may want to uh, remove a volume of blood and do your cuvette calibration there and then on the bench top but as I said before we've done this in a previous experiment clicking on the cuvette calibration brings up a calibration window which allows you to type in known volume and conductance and it will plot a standard curve for you and doing this standard curve it will calculate the um, gradient, the slope and also the um, intersect on either the conductance line or the volume line. However we have done this already so bringing our Excel spreadsheet over here we can see that our mean slope is 2.905 um, this is a comma because this was done in Germany it's a German spreadsheet so this is not 2905 it's 2.905 and the mean intercept is minus 5.3 so it's 2.9 and minus 5.3 so we'll move that out of the way again so one microliter is 2.9 and our RVU is minus 5.323 so this is doing our cuvette calibration and this will calibrate now our RVUs to the cuvette click on apply and you can see now our RVUs have been converted to microliters in our display and these aren't calibrated microliters, these are relative microliters. So you can see that the stroke volume here um, in this heart is about 15, maybe 18 microliters. But we don't know what the zero intercept is. And if you try to calculate ejection fraction from these numbers, you could see quite clearly that you've got a volume of around 50 microliters at the end of every systolic um, period, which is clearly incorrect. Unless, of course, your heart is massively massively dilated and you've got some pathology going on but in a normal heart you wouldn't expect these numbers so then that leads us to do the saline calibration the saline calibration is used to calculate um, the parallel conductance in the hearts by injecting a small bolus about 20 to 50 microliters of a hypertonic saline solution and uh, Millar recommend between 7% and 10% saline some other companies recommend higher percentages of saline with smaller volumes um, but then we click on this little box here and again the windows have changed they're giving us uh, new data new information that we need to fill in and down here again it invites us to enter various numbers um, we have already done the parallel conductance measurements in this animal and if I use the drop down list on the commands you can see here there is a sodium chloride injection at point number eight so if I click on him I get taken over in the data to the sodium chloride injection and you can see here from the volume we have a leftward shift of our pressure of our volume loops and you can see this is the area you need to select click on this selection and you click on the number button here that says analyze now and immediately the software let's move it out of the way the software will plot our pressure volume loops in the right hand window and will calculate our slope and our intersect in the left hand window. These numbers up here are the numbers we then need to enter but of course the nice people at LabChart have done this for us and this number now appears down here in the left hand window and we can add that to the analysis and immediately now it is put that number in. You could do a number of parallel conductance um, saline injections and add them all to here and it will take an average from that but we've done one and we're quite happy with that uh, and we'll leave it at that for the moment. Uh, we'll then apply the parallel conductance and watch very carefully at the numbers in this volume trace here. As I click parallel conductance apply, the numbers have changed and now the software has calibrated our volumes to fit now with what it believes to be true volume uh, which has used this number of parallel conductance to try and take away essentially 42.226 it is taken away from all of our numbers that we had prior to this uh, and we've got our actual volume here alpha calibration 
is an interesting thing. Uh, there's certainly plenty of discussion about the use of alpha calibration, and in the in the most, if only PV loops are available to you to look at the heart, your alpha will be one, because you don't have any other way of calculating stroke volume or in this case cardiac output. So we're going to assume that alpha is one. If you've got access to a, a ultrasound machine, to MRI to um, any other type of flow measurement, you can measure cardiac output or stroke volume using a, a third-party application, and then you can work out perhaps what alpha is. Uh, most labs these days will have a high-resolution ultrasound somewhere to hand, and if you do a cohort of mice and work out what your average uh, stroke volume is from those mice, and then what your average stroke volume is from your Miller catheter, you can work out what the alpha is. And if you've got a Stroke volume in Miller catheter here, we've got 19.8 as our average, so we type in 19.8. If we had our ultrasound, and the ultrasound said it was 25.6, your alpha would be 0.77. But in this case, we're just going to put in 19.8, because we don't have the echo measurements, especially from these mice. So we'll leave this as it is, and we will apply our alpha. And because we've got an alpha of 1, there is no change to the numbers. If we just type in an 25.5 here and apply the alpha it has changed the numbers over here for us which is you can see the scale has just moved slightly but we'll leave this at 19.8 because those are the numbers we want to use and finally we click on the analysis button the windows have been changing as I've been clicking on various numbers and actually when you're using the alpha calibration you get this final analysis window just close that window there we have selected, in this case, the saline injection. You don't want to use the saline injection to calculate your normal um, physiology because, of course, it's not normal physiology. So we're going to go back in time, find a point in our trace here, and select an area. And we're going to click on the Analyze Now button. And this will give us an analysis of our baseline hemodynamics in this mouse. Click Analyze. All these numbers change. You now have a series of uh, rows here. We've got one through to 16 and these correspond to the 16 loops that we have selected with little pink dots above them here on this chart on the on the right you can adjust your detector settings if for instance you've made an awful mistake and the settings aren't quite right you can click on this button and you can choose channels for pressure channels for volume but since we've gone through the whole calibration pathway we've already got these set and we know they are correct um, and equally you can change the sensitivity for the pressure signal by default, the sensitivity is 20 millimeters of mercury. So if your pressure signal goes above 20, it indicates that's going to be a systolic peak. And you can choose a minimum period as well, but that's really not relevant for this kind of study. So we'll leave it as it is. And we're happy that these are all pressure volume loops. And now we can see our baseline hemodynamics. We've got our average values in the top row of the bottom section here, all our loop values up the middle. And we can see that in this case, the stroke volume of this mouse, following all the calibration we've done, is shown to be around 15 microliters, which is maybe a little bit on the low side for a normal mouse, but certainly not abnormal for a, a data set recorded with a conductance catheter. And we can scroll through these numbers and see other values, including ejection fraction, which you could then relate to your ejection fraction from ECHO, for instance, or MRI. We've got power readings, we've got DPDT max, DPDT min, and at the end here we've got the relaxation constant tau. So all of these numbers can then be copied and pasted into Excel. We can export these from the data by clicking the export button and that will save all these data as a tab delimited uh, text file or a comma separated text file you can choose. You can add them to your data pad and save them for analysis later. And there's various options here where you can choose to show any one or any um, number of, of analysis. For instance, if all you're interested in is the first column of data you can deselect all these data click OK and now you've got a smaller data set to be able to add to your data pad or export so there's no point in exporting everything if you're not interested in all of the numbers and at the end of the experiment you've probably also done some kind of occlusion to look at um, load independent um, changes in heart function so look at contractility so we're going to use the drop down list and find one of the occlusions it's worth noting these occlusions weren't occluding the inferior vena cava or the aorta. Uh, it was occluding the um, outflow pipe coming from the ventilator, which would increase thoracic pressure and therefore have a very similar effect, but for better 
analysis, you really want to do a, an inferior vena cava occlusion or an aortic occlusion. Um, you can do this by pushing um, on the chest, you can do this by pushing on the abdomen, but for the purest results, the best thing is to do a surgically um, accessed IVC and then use a little pair of plastic forceps to occlude the IVC for around three or four seconds. You don't want your pressure to drop below about 40 millimeters of mercury because then you may actually induce a pathology in the heart. So in this one we've gone down from about 80 down to about 65 millimeters of mercury pressure. So we select our occlusion and over here we change our analysis type to occlusion. A whole load of new boxes appear on the screen including the preload recruitable stroke work, a uh, PVA end diastolic relationship and a PVA end systolic relationship linear graph and these look very good data, look very clean data and now on the bottom left hand is the two numbers that are the most important numbers if you believe any clinical cardiologist in that the end systolic pressure volume relationship and the end diastolic pressure volume relationship and we've got values here that we could then uh, copy and paste into Excel or just write down on a piece of paper. Um, ESPVR and EDPVR you can choose a linear, quadratic, exponential or linear relationship um, and that's up to you which one of these you use. So those are all the analysis. We've got hemodynamic data, baseline hemodynamic data from this animal. We've got uh, calibrated volumes taken from the parallel conductance and the Kubek calibration and we've got uh, indices of contractility in the end systolic and end diastolic pressure volume relationships without having to leave lab chart using the uh, available plugin made by AD Instruments, the PB Loop plugin, and following their workflow. Um, and in fact, following this workflow seems to work incredibly well. We've just done this single entity here, but you can see how quick and easy it would be once you have the saline, cuvette, and other calibrations just to enter the numbers. So there we have it.